We till now we had discussed uh, aspects about uh, solid uh, rockets, liquid rockets and hybrid rockets. Now let us look at uh, how to determine its performance. Uh, we had talked about this that uh, we need to uh, understand equilibrium calculations in order to get to know what is the composition of the gases in the uh, rocket motor and then uh, we need to look at what happens uh, when the when these gases flow through the nozzle. Uh, remember initially when we discussed about uh, nozzle flow, we had said there are two assumptions that are possible. One is uh, equilibrium assumption wherein we assume that there is sufficient time for the reactions to take place and uh, because of which uh, if you look at uh, the uh, temperatures that are achieved inside the nozzle because there is a temperature and pressure decrease. Uh, certain kind of exothermic reactions are favored and you will get a better performance if you have equilibrium conditions and if you have the other condition that is frozen condition that is the composition is frozen at the entry to the nozzle uh, then you will get a slightly inferior for performance right. Uh, we can examine those things uh, here uh, with this software called uh, NASA SP273. Uh, earlier it was written in Fortran language and uh, it was used as such with uh, input file. Uh, currently there is a front end uh, available to it and uh, it is called a CEA software which you can download uh, from the internet. It is freely accessible and uh, if you download uh, this software uh, you will find that uh, it has a manual and uh, it has all the other input uh, files, example input files that are there. Now, if you look at uh, the folder in which it is there, you will have something known as uh, CAEXC win, which if you double click, you will be able to open uh, this software. This needs a Java platform to run on. Now, if you open this, uh, this software is a more generic software. Uh, it, uh, it can solve many kinds of uh, problems. One is the rocket problem that is of interest to us uh, that is here. Uh, then in addition to that, it can solve the combustion problem that is uh, if you are holding internal energy and volume constant then assign temperature and volume being constant, uh, then enthalpy and pressure being constant. That is if you are only interested in looking at the combustion chamber of a rocket motor or uh, a gas turbine engine and what are the temperatures that are achieved and other things, then you can use this. Again you have assigned temperature and pressure, it can also do the uh, shock tube problems and uh, many other problems. Now let us uh, in this case uh, look at only the uh, rocket problem because that is of interest to us. So you have to firstly click on this uh, rocket problem. Now uh, this menu opens up wherein you can uh, define whether you want equilibrium or frozen flow conditions in the nozzle. You can click for both because the actual situation will be somewhere in between equilibrium and frozen flow. So you have to give the chamber pressures as an input. So let us say uh, firstly uh, we have to before we go there we have to uh, as I said earlier there are example problems. So firstly let us look at uh, the example problem that is there uh, that is uh, example 8 which is stated as a rocket problem okay. Now here if you look at uh, this, uh, this is an example problem. The initial pressure is set as uh, 53. We can change that to something like uh, 100 bar okay. Uh, 
you can uh, input at one time uh, many more pressures 150 bar and 200 bar. Okay. You can also have different units uh, in which these can be expressed. We will click both uh, equilibrium and frozen and uh, for the exit uh, you can either define a supersonic area ratio or uh, in terms of pressure ratio. So, we will define uh, in terms of uh, area supersonic area ratios that is uh, 25, 50, 75 and lastly we will define something like 100. So, and finally, you have to save this. Once you save this, because this is a liquid propellant problem, uh, you have to define the oxidizer to fuel ratio. Right? Uh, there are uh, different ways to give that, one is uh, equivalence ratio is also possible, then oxidizer to fuel ratio is possible, then percentage of fuel by weight is also possible. So, let us click on the oxidizer to fuel uh, ratios, uh, there is one set value that is given here, that is the value at which probably you will get the best performance. Okay. Now, let us also click other O by F ratios. Remember, uh, we are doing this problem, uh, the reactants are, uh, if you click on this uh, reactants, uh, this thing, you will get fuel is uh, liquid hydrogen and oxidizer is liquid oxygen. Uh, for stoichiometric conditions, the O by F should be 8. So, which is why I have clicked 8. Now, uh, because these uh, are uh, already there in the menu, uh, so the temperatures uh, automatically come in and the heats of formation are also automatically taken in. Okay. Now, if you click on this, uh, if you click on the name and uh, if you check something as take something as a fuel and if you click on that, you can change it from uh, liquid hydrogen to something else also. And uh, there are a few options that are available here uh, like methane, then uh, uh, there is kerosene, JP 4, JP 10 all this, then the, there is also RP 1. Okay. We will right now stick to what is uh, been selected that is uh, liquid hydrogen. Okay. And you have uh, liquid oxygen, as I said again you can click on this and select uh, any other oxidizer. There are various options here that you can uh, look at that is uh, H2O2, H2O2. Uh, then RFNA, IRFNA, uh, then N2O4, okay. so, and also uh, liquid oxygen. So, we will go with liquid oxygen. So, both of them are 100 percent. You can define uh, whether you want liquid oxygen as 50 percent, some other oxidizer as 50 percent, that is also possible. So, we will save this and what you have to do is you have to go to this activity and click on the execute C. So, if you do that it will execute the program and give you an output file in this fashion. You can also open this uh, output file uh, as a word the file, you can open it as a notepad or a word pad. Now, if you look at the output, it firstly tells you what are the input conditions that you have given, 
the O by F ratios. Okay, you have chosen uh, equilibrium and frozen and what are the pressures, what is the pressure ratios that you have uh, looked at and uh, supersonic area ratios, what are the reactants and what is the units in which the output file is expressed in. So, now if you scroll down you will get uh, So, if you look at the output file here, you will find that uh, firstly the O by F ratios that we have uh, chosen are indicated here, then we have set both equilibrium and frozen flow, then the various pressures at which we want to run this calculations those are given here, uh, then the exit pressure ratios, supersonic area ratios and subsonic area ratios and then what are the reactants that we have uh, used and uh, the outputs will be expressed in SI units. Now, if you scroll down, uh, this is the place where you will have uh, the results. What you can see here is uh, fuel and oxidizers are given, the energy, the heats of formation are also given here. Now, we will take the case when O by F is 5.55 and uh, the pressure is 100 bar, this is what we had given. Now, <coughs> look at what happens to molecular weight, this column here is uh, molecular weight. Now, the molecular weight is somewhere around 12.8, okay. So, and the temperatures you get are given here, this is in the combustion chamber. So, this is around 3450 almost and uh, this is the throat uh, region as uh, the flow expands the temperature drops, so also the pressure drops okay. and further as you go to uh, different area ratios which are given here, this is A e by A t, if you use a 68 uh, A e by A t then 1.58, 25, 50, 75 and 100. So, you can see that uh, both temperatures and pressures keep dropping after the chamber depending on what we have as the area ratio okay. and uh, what this also will give you is uh, specific impulse and vacuum specific impulse. So, you can see that the vacuum specific impulse is always going to be higher than the uh, specific impulse. Uh, this specific impulse is at sea level, okay, wherein the ambient pressure is one uh, atmosphere. So, you see that uh, at sea level uh, with an area ratio of 68, you will get uh, something like uh, 4384 Newton second per kg it is seen as meters per second here which is the same as Newton second per kg. So, the ISPs that you get are very high. Okay. If you use a larger area ratio nozzle you will get even higher specific impulse that is what you will see here as you change the uh, area ratios the specific impulse also will increase. You also can get uh, C star values which are shown here okay, and uh, correspondingly C f values. So, you just have to multiply C star into C f to get uh, ISPs. This also gives you as I said earlier that uh, if you look at the exhaust, uh, it will have various species. So, the species uh, that are there are H, H, H O 2, H 2, H 2 O, H 2 O 2, O, O H and O 2. 
and the corresponding mole fractions are given here. Okay. You can see that a large fraction is H2O okay. and uh, there is quite a bit of unburnt hydrogen. right? So, <coughs> uh, this constitutes roughly 95 percent and the remaining 5 percent is uh, contributed by the other species. So, these are the two major species okay, in the uh, chamber as well as in the exhaust. Now, this was with uh, equilibrium right? and you can see that uh, if you look at the composition right. Let me first go back and check whether this is Uh, at this uh, at some values the frozen flow does not uh, give the correct composition. Okay. Uh, now, take a look at uh, the ISPs, let us take uh, this last two values, uh, we will take a look at only the vacuum specific impulse, this is roughly 4600 at 100 area ratio. Okay. Now, if we do a frozen flow analysis in the nozzle, it reduces to 4425 at the same conditions of A e by A t. So, it is very clear that the actual one will probably lie between 4425 to 4600. Okay. So, the actual ISPs uh, that we get will be somewhere between this. Uh, this was uh, for uh, 5.55 O by F now if you look at O by F of 1 okay, the temperatures that you get are very low. So, therefore, the ISPs that you get are also not very large 3632 and 3700 at uh, area ratio of 100 and vacuum specific impulse is 3825. Although the molecular weight in this case because uh, the O by F is 1, right. Uh, we need a higher O by F to completely burn it, O by F of 8 is required. If we use a very low O by F, as you can see here molecular weight is also very low. Although temperatures are lower, molecular weights are also lower, but still as C star is nothing but uh, under root T C by M, we finally will get something like uh, 3600 seconds. And then if we increase the O by F to 2, then the temperatures rise, but so also will the molecular weights and as a consequence you will uh, get to a slightly higher ISP of 4249. Then if we go to an O by F of 3, uh, temperatures go to 2450 and uh, molecular weights increase to something like 8. So, consequently ISPs go to something like 4469. Then further if we increase the O by F to 4. this goes to 4, 5, 6, 9. Okay. F 
5 it becomes 4, 4, 7, 5. Here in this case temperatures are increasing, but molecular weight is also increasing. So, therefore, the ISP change is very small and the best is probably at uh, somewhere around uh, 5.55, 5 you get 4, 6, 0, 3 okay. and 5.5 is where you will get the best ISP. This is for uh, liquid propellants. Uh, the same information is shown here in this graph here, which shows on the x axis uh, chamber pressure and ISP on the y axis. Uh, there are two ISP graphs here. One is uh, ISP at sea level, which is indicated by this blue line, and there is ISP vacuum, which is indicated by this red line, which is usually higher. Both these are for the hydrogen and oxygen system at an O by F of. 5.55 and at all these pressures the area ratio of the nozzle is such that the flow is optimally expanded. Now, one can see that as pressure increases uh, the ISP also increases both the sea level and the vacuum ISPs both of them increase. Now, uh, to understand why uh, it is uh, that we choose an O by F of around 5.55 uh, for the hydrogen oxygen system. Uh, we have plotted here uh, chamber temperature, C star and molecular weight. Uh, molecular weight is in blue color that is this line. Uh, chamber temperature is in red that is this line and uh, C star is shown here in this green line. Uh, this is at uh, different O by F and the flow is optimally expanded for a pressure of 70 bar. That is the area ratio of the nozzle is chosen such that flow is optimally expanded. Now, if you see at around 5.5 is where uh, chamber temperature is also high, molecular weight is uh, also not as large. So, you will find that uh, the C star values are very good. Now, with these C star values, if you multiply it by the C f, which is a function of nozzle uh, area ratio and pressure ratios, you will find that you will get a very good uh, ISP at around 5.5, which is why most uh, rocket motors which use hydrogen oxygen uh, combination uh, operate around this uh, oxidizer to fuel ratio. Now, here uh, I have compared uh, hydrogen and oxygen and kerosene and oxygen systems. Uh, the red line here is the variation of kerosene oxygen with chamber pressure. This is uh, ISP and uh, this is uh, sea level ISP, wherein with increase in pressure the flow is optimally expanded. That is the area ratio is so chosen that at each and every pressure here the flow is optimally expanded. One can see that uh, when we change from kerosene to hydrogen as the fuel, the ISP is much higher with hydrogen as the fuel compared to with kerosene as the fuel. This is because uh, one, uh, the molecular weight of uh, hydrogen is much lower and therefore, you will find that the C star values for uh, hydrogen systems will be larger than what you would get with uh, kerosene and therefore, you get a very good specific impulse with hydrogen and oxygen systems. And if you look at the sizing of the overall system, it depends on uh, the O by F at which it is operated. If you see here oxygen, hydrogen and oxygen systems are shown here. This is with different oxidizer to fuel ratio and ISP on the y axis. The red line indicates kerosene oxygen and the blue line uh, indicates hydrogen and oxygen and the chamber pressure is 70 bar and the flow is optimally expanded. So, you find that uh, you need a uh, O by F of around 5.5 to get a very good uh, uh, specific impulse whereas, with the liquid oxygen and kerosene you need somewhere around 2.5 to get a very good specific impulse.
we will now look at uh, uh, a solid propellant. The example 5 problem uh, here deals with a solid propellant, but the binder is uh, something different. So, we will take a look at uh, another uh, example wherein I have looked at HTPB as the binder. Now, if you look at uh, this, there is 68 percent uh, ammonium perchlorate, 18 percent uh, aluminum and then 14 percent uh, HTPB. Now, as I said, uh, if there are, if these uh, compounds are not found in the list, you have a provision here to uh, indicate a name and then uh, amount and what temperatures and energy and you can also provide a chemical formula here. Uh, I have taken a butadiene formula here C 4 H 6 which is very good uh, approximation for HTPB. HTPB will have an OH uh, radical in the end of the chain. Even if we uh, neglect it, it does not matter as much to uh, what we are doing. So, here uh, what we have to uh, click is for a solid propellant it does not uh, everything is preset. In some sense you just have to define what are the percentages and that should automatically take care. Therefore, we do not have anything clicked in this menu here and uh, if we click at the rocket menu we have something like uh, at 70 atmospheres and uh, 70 pressure ratio, we can also give something like 10 and 15 area ratios. So, we click both uh, equilibrium and frozen flow. So, now if we look at the output file, uh, you have uh, 70 bar uh, as the pressure area ratios and then uh, the various uh, uh, components that is ammonium perchlorate, aluminum and uh, HTPB which is 14 percent. So, now if we look at uh, what happens uh, 70 atmospheres the temperature is very high, but because the molecular weight is also quite high you end up getting an ISP of around uh, 257 seconds. This is with equilibrium calculations with frozen calculations it will be uh, even lower sometimes this frozen calculation does not work beyond the throat uh, because if you have more of alumina uh, then uh, it does not uh, work for the frozen flow because it then becomes a two phase problem. Okay. You are looking at um, if you look at what are the temperatures this is lower than the uh, alumina melting point. So, it will be a two phase problem and therefore, the frozen flow will not be able to solve for it. Now, one can also look at uh, this is with uh, if you lower the pressure to something like 6 bar, okay, you notice that these temperatures are also not very high because the uh, if you look at equilibrium pressure is also something that determines what is the equilibrium composition and uh, therefore, the temperatures will depend on what is the pressure. So, you will get a lower temperature and correspondingly a lower ISP. Right. What this software will not be able to tell you is uh, look at uh, the ISP column with 15 area ratio and with 6 bar right. 
So, the pressures if you are uh, doing this experiment at sea level the exit pressure is very very low right and in this condition uh, you will have uh, probably a normal shot uh, sitting in the uh, divergent portion of the nozzle and therefore, you will not be able to get these kind of ISPs, but unfortunately this software will not be able to tell you that. So, one needs to be careful and look at uh, the exit pressures while doing this. If you are doing sea level operation you need to be careful about what is the exit pressure and use the summer field criterion which is uh, something like one third of the exit pressure is what it can take uh, without any problem. Okay. Now, one can also change uh, the remember we said if we make this uh, aluminum is added only to enhance the specific impulse. So, so let us say we make it 0 percent and this 86 percent. So, ammonium perchlorate and uh, binder only. So, then if you run the Two three eight five, so it has reduced because aluminum content is not there. Uh, look at the, the other thing that uh, the temperatures here you get is lower, molecular weight is also lower, but in that case the temperature was higher and molecular weight was high, uh, higher by it went up to something like twenty seven. So therefore, uh, this was around three thousand four hundred and this was twenty seven. Therefore, you ended up getting a higher specific impulse. Okay. Now, uh, solid propellants we had just now seen how uh, its ISP varies with uh, pressure. Here we have plotted uh, pressure on the x axis and ISP on the y axis and uh, at each and every pressure the flow is optimally expanded that is again the area ratio is so chosen that the flow is optimally expanded and the red line indicates a non aluminized propellant and the blue line indicates an aluminized propellant. It is very obvious from this graph that uh, for an aluminized propellant the ISP is always higher because with the aluminum combustion the chamber temperature is always higher and therefore, you get a much better ISP uh, compared to a non aluminized propellant and also both of them tend to increase with increase in pressure. Anyway, we will go to uh, liquid a uh, hybrid propellants now hybrid propellants as i said uh, we can look at uh, uh, htpb binder and uh, liquid oxygen as oxidizer Okay, that is what we have selected here uh, liquid oxygen 100 percent uh, HTPB binder 100 percent. Okay. Now, uh, we need to also give uh, O by F ratios. So, we can give something like 1 Uh, 2.2 roughly is where you will get the best performance. So, if you look at the pressure we have given something like 200 here let us lower it a little to 100 and supersonic area ratios ranging from 30 to 60. Okay. 
now if we open the output file So, O by F ratios ranging from 1 to 3 and we also have 2.2 and uh, fuel is HTPB, oxidizer is liquid oxygen and pressure 100 bar and uh, area ratios. We see that uh, at O by F of 1, uh, the temperatures are very low and as a consequence uh, you will get something like uh, 260 seconds or two, uh, 274 seconds with vacuum ISP. Now, if you go to higher O by F, at 2 the temperatures increase and also the molecular weights will increase and as a consequence you will get something like uh, 327 seconds uh, sea level ISP and around 340 seconds vacuum ISP. Okay. Then if we go to something like then you get uh, these kind of numbers. Okay. The temperatures has increased, but molecular weight has also increased. Okay. Now, you can uh, play around with uh, the kind of additives that you would want to add. Let us say I talked about aluminum hydride as a possible additive that can uh, increase the specific impulse uh, quite a bit. So, we will select aluminum hydride, it is already there, I just need to uh, put something like uh, 50 percent aluminum hydride and uh, reduce the binder content to something like 50 percent. So, overall the binder and the fuel uh, binder and uh, aluminum hydride put together is 100 percent. So, now if we run this Here you see we have added aluminum hydride that is around uh, 50 percent and binder has been reduced to 50 percent. Somewhere around 2, uh, the temperatures are very high and so also the ISP is high, uh, 341 seconds and vacuum ISP is 361 right. And uh, at an O by F of 1, uh, it, it is 351 and uh, 367 seconds. You see here as uh, O by F is reduced, the molecular weight is getting reduced and the temperatures are also smaller. But what we are interested in is a combination and therefore, we end up getting a better performance at this O by F. Okay. Now, if you go to an O by F of uh, 3, the molecular weight has increased to something like 30 and uh, the chamber temperature is 4000 but the ISP you will get is lower. Okay. So, with aluminum hydride it offers uh, you can also change the 
fraction of aluminum hydride and find out where you will get the best performance. Uh, what we have probably selected is not the optimal. So, you can play around with it and find out at what fraction uh, you will get a better performance. Uh, aluminum hydride is a good uh, additive to add because it can then increase the specific impulse and uh, if you look at uh, the specific impulse with HTPB and LOX as I said earlier, uh, this is very similar to what you will get with kerosene LOX. But if you want to go beyond that, uh, you have to use something like aluminum hydride uh, which will increase the specific impulse even further. Here there are uh, two hybrid systems that are compared, uh, on the x axis you have chamber pressure and on the y axis ISP. Uh, the red line is for uh, uh, aluminum hydride and HTPB, 50 percent aluminum hydride, 50 percent HTPB and uh, liquid oxygen. The blue line is for uh, liquid oxygen and uh, HTPB. Uh, the O by F is 2 for the blue one and uh, the O by F is uh, 1.3 for the red line that is aluminum hydride propellant. And in uh, all these cases the flow is optimally expanded. Now if you see here uh, with aluminum hydride being added at the expense of HTPB, we do tend to get a very good uh, specific impulse and this tends to increase with pressure. So, uh, there is a difference of around uh, 20 seconds uh, in ISP between these two. So, adding of aluminum hydride is a very uh, good thing, it will help in increasing the uh, ISP. Uh, the again we are comparing aluminum hydride propellants with the HTPB and O2 propellants this is again a hybrid rocket. Uh, here we plotted with O by F and uh, ISP on the y axis. This is for a chamber pressure of 70 bar and again the flow is optimally expanded. Uh, what we see here is another interesting feature. Uh, the red line is for uh, aluminum hydride and HTPB combination and the blue line is for uh, hydrogen HTPB and oxygen system. Now, if you see here uh, the peak specific impulse is achieved uh, with aluminum hydride propellants at around 1, whereas it needs to go to somewhere around 2.2 for HTPB and O2. What it indicates is that uh, if you use aluminum hydride, uh, you will get a much smaller or a much more compact system with density impulse being higher uh, because the O by F at which the best specific impulse is achieved is at 1. Usually liquid oxygen which has a density of around uh, 1140 has lower density compared to uh, the solids and uh, this here has a density of around uh, 1200 to 1300. So therefore, you will get a very good uh, density impulse and uh, this is this makes the systems smaller. So, uh, you can as I said uh, play around with this and try and generate your own numbers. Uh, one way to check whether you have done something correctly is look at literature, if you do a solid propellant what are the ISPs to get and then find out if you redo the same will you get the same. So, and then you can once you get the confidence you can play around with this and uh, look for other additives and things like that ok. We will stop here, thank you very much.